With a fair dice, we know the probability of scoring any one of those numbers is one in six. So we get four fair dice thrown. We've got to work out the probability of scoring a six with at least one of the four dice. A couple of different ways we could approach this. If we were to use a probability tree, we want to make sure we don't get too complicated with that. I mean, we could think, well, we've got six different possible numbers, so we need six parts. Not at all. If we just had it scoring a six or not scoring a six, we'll keep it really nice and simple for us. Now we know the probability of scoring a six is one in six, so not a six. The other five numbers is five in six. With the next part of the probability tree, it doesn't matter what goes on with this past here. Whether any more sixes have rolled or not, at least one of the four dice has rolled a six already. So we can leave that there and just follow on this bottom part here. Again, we can have a six or not a six. The same probabilities as before. Again, we're not interested what goes on here because already we've got at least one six. Doesn't matter. So we could then have a six, not a six. And for the fourth row, again, six or not a six and these probabilities remain the same each time they're independent now using this way to calculate scoring six at least one of the four dice this first part here is just a one in six chance we need to add to that the probability of this. So that would be 5, 6 times 1, 6. We then need to add to that the probability of the next part. So down here, down here, this one. And then we've got the last possible way here. So you could absolutely do it this way. And if you calculate it carefully, it will get you to the right answer. Doing that will give you the probability of rolling a six or at least one of four dice. There's another nice way to do it though. If we think, well, the only possible way here to not get at least one six is to get not six every time. So that will give us five six times five six times five six times five six. Okay. This is the probability of no sixes we have here. So that will give us 625 out of 1,296. Now this isn't the answer because we want the probability of scoring at least one six. So we need to do one take away this probability. And that gives us 671 over 1,296. And that's the answer. Same answer you'd get if you did it this way. Like I say, this method's great, but there's some more calculating. I think this one's quite a nice shortcut. Here we've got a bag with four green counters and then red counters. So the total number of counters is four plus n. So we've got one taken at random, it's replaced, and then take another one. So the events are independent. The first one doesn't affect the second one because they're replaced. And we're told the probability of getting two red counters is four ninths. Now this bit may have looked a bit confusing at first. We need to write down an equation giving the answer in the form of a quadratic. So let's see what we've got on a Probability tree will help us organize our thoughts with this. So it can either be green or red. 
the probability of being green, well, there's four green counters out of a total of four plus n counters. There's n red counters out of a total of four plus n counters. And then the second one again can be green or red, green or red. Now, all we're interested in here is the probability of red then red. So the probability here will be the same as it was before because the counter was replaced, they're independent. So to find this probability, we need to multiply these two together. And multiplying out the brackets, So this is the probability of getting two reds algebraically using that n to represent the red counters. But remember, we're also told that this is equal to four ninths. And we need to rearrange this to get it in the form here of the quadratic we've been asked for. And it asks us for this to have a the coefficient of n squared as a positive integer. So if we multiply across, multiply both sides by n squared plus 8n plus 16, both sides by 9, OK. And then rearranging. Got to take away 4n squared from both sides. Take away 32n from both sides. Take away 64. And then we have it in the form we've been asked for with a as a positive integer. 